Hi everybody, welcome to this quick pre-primer on historical context for the Kite Runner. First, we're just going to go through some stuff that's going to help you visualize the novel while you read, starting with this photo, and then just talking a little bit about the setting of Afghanistan. While it is a rocky and dry terrain, it is also mountainous in sort of the center part of the country. Like Colorado, the climate has hot summers and cold winters, maybe not to the same extremes that we experience here. And then you can see all of its border countries, which is identified again here in this map. The majority of the beginning part of the book takes place in Kabul in Afghanistan, but at some point they emigrate into Pakistan and then ultimately to the United States. What you will come to understand as you read The Kite Runner is that you've got a story of a young boy and the backdrop is sort of this political situation that's occurring in Afghanistan at the time. And so it's important for you to understand, at least on a cursory level, what was going on politically so that you can appreciate how those characters come to sort of represent certain ideals of the country past, present, and future. And as we go through this political piece, I just want to make you aware that as you're watching the screencast, anything that you see in blue is what is happening in the Kite Runner. So that's how those two things come together. So in 1919, Afghanistan was a monarchy. And what you'll know in the beginning of Kite Runner is that that monarchy, alive and well in 1919, is still in place and the country is relatively calm. So our protagonist, Amir, arrives on scene in a calm, kind of politically safe realm. Now in 1973, the King's brother staged a coup in order to create a republic, and that chaos starts to erupt in the Kite Runner as the King gets overthrown by his brother, so you're going to see that situation occur. In 1978, communists then overthrew that ruler and they took over the government. And then a year later, the Soviet Union actually sent troops into Afghanistan to build up that communist regime. That Soviet occupation resulted in a ton of Afghans emigrating. Over 5 million people left and mostly went to Pakistan. And that is also paralleled in the novel because Amir, our protagonist, and Baba, his father, uh, uh, emigrate to Pakistan and then ultimately, as I had indicated, to the United States. Now, a decade later, there was this kind of worldwide push going on against communism, and so the Soviet Union ultimately left the country, and they kind of left it in chaos. There were all these kind of warlords that were established throughout the countryside, and this giant civil war ensued. By 1996, that chaos that was left when the Soviets left spawned the rise of the Taliban, and it seized Kabul. You will also see that mirrored or reflected in the Kite Runner in the second half when the Taliban is in power and Amir returns to Afghanistan. All right, so Taliban is actually plural for Talib, which simply means one who seeks knowledge. Their original goal was simply to restore order to Afghanistan. They believed in Sharia law and they were also largely Pashtuns, we will get to that, and so they believed in their original tribal customs, and that resulted in a lot of oppression of women. And ultimately, under the Taliban's rule, human rights in general and civil liberties were slowly sort of peeled away. As a result, there was some cruel and humane treatment of those who opposed them in order to sort of solidify their power over the citizens. They set up training camps all over the Middle East to train soldiers to fight on their behalf. And all of those politics also intersect with religion. So the main religious belief in Afghanistan is Islam. That's a religion based on the interpretation of God's words by the prophet Muhammad that are found in the Quran. And just FYI, the three largest religions in our world, those being Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all believe in the same God. So when any of those three religions say God, they mean the same thing across those religions. Now the religion of Islam is divided into these two main denominations, the Shia and the Sunni. And because of the differing views of those two groups, they have kind of a tense and hostile relationship with one another. 
and there's one more sort of conflict that we've got to talk about, and that is the racial conflict that was taking place in Afghanistan during the course of this novel. So there is this sort of distinct racial division in Afghanistan between the Hazara and the Pashtun. Those are in blue because you'll see a lot of that in this novel. The Pashtun are the majority race, and then they discriminate against the Hazara. It is widespread. The Pashtun, again the majority, are typically Sunni, and the Hazara, the minority, are typically Shia. And you should probably make a note of that or a special note to connect those two ideas that the racial discrimination also follows a religious difference as well. All right, so Pashtun are predominantly Sunni Muslims who are the dominant group in Afghanistan. And in Kite Runner, Amir and Baba are Pashtun. Again, Amir is our protagonist, Baba is his father. Now the Hazara are most easily identified by this kind of shape and color of their eyes. There is an argument that they are direct descendants of Genghis Khan. He was an invader of Afghanistan during the 13th century, and so they are often seen as invaders as opposed to true or original Afghanis, and that is used to discriminate against them. They typically function as the servant class, and they don't enjoy many of the freedoms that the Pashtun upper class enjoy. And in Kite Runner, the connection there is that Hassan, who is Baba's servant's son, is a Hazara and is discriminated against, even though Hassan and Amir, who are roughly the same age, become very good friends. So here's a quick Kite Runner summary. If you would like this background knowledge, then I recommend that you hit pause and just read it to yourself. Otherwise, Follow with me and come to the next slide. A couple of Afghan words that you'll need to know. Just look those over. And here are our major characters. So Amir, again, is our protagonist. He is the narrator of this story, and he is a Sunni Pashtun. Baba is his father. He's a very wealthy Afghan, and he is a Sunni Pashtun. Rahim Khan is Baba's best friend and his business partner, and he serves kind of as an uncle to Amir, although they are not blood related. And then there is Hassan, who is Amir's best friend. Uh, he is a servant. He's a Shia Hazara, and his father is Ali, and Ali is Baba's actual servant, and he too is a Shia Hazara. All right, there are several thematic issues that are going to occur in this novel. Now, I just want to talk to you for a hot minute about the difference between a thematic issue and a theme. An issue is a topic, and I'll show you a bunch of those. What you're going to want to do as a reader is to take those topics and formulate an opinion about what you think the author's trying to say about those topics. So, for example, Bullying is a thematic issue that occurs in this novel, and throughout the course of the telling of the story of bullying, your job is to determine what you think the author's trying to say about bullying. Is the author trying to say, uh, kind of, boys will be boys, and boys should kind of learn to figure stuff out for themselves? Or is the author saying bullying under any circumstance is never acceptable? So you're going to decide through the telling of the story, you're going to determine what you think the author's perspective on bullying is. All right, we've got friendship, guilt, and redemption, fathers and sons, coming of age, the resilience of the human spirit, and redemption. On to column two, man's inhumanity to man, discrimination, prejudice, bigotry, class structure, master-slave relationships, and finally, loyalty and devotion versus duty. And we've got some essential questions that we're going to grapple with throughout the course of our unit. Things like, is it ever appropriate or necessary to remain a silent bystander when someone is being hurt physically or emotionally? And I think that that's a really complex question that you'll want to think about. Are there certain circumstances under which bystanding is okay or is it never okay? Is it possible to atone or to make amends for our wrongdoings? Any wrongdoings? Certain wrongdoings? Next, do we have an obligation to be loyal and truthful to our friends and family members? Is family a bond that can never be broken? Or is family just family? You're kind of destined into it, but you don't have to stay there. So those issues are going to be addressed in the course of this novel. And then finally, 
What drives us to seek acceptance? And then I would ask some follow-up questions about that. Like, are those drivers always positive? Do they always kind of push us to be better people? Or can they also hinder us and prevent us from becoming who we really truly were destined to be? And with that, I leave you to open up Kite Runner and begin your reading. I super hope you enjoy this novel. I love it. And don't forget, you're going to have a quiz on this information in a couple of days. So you're going to want to be sure you've taken copious notes and that you've studied those notes so you're ready for your quiz. Have a great day, everybody.